Hello again, this is Rick Bozinski, Chief Economist at Ivis World. This is a continuation of my COVID-19 related webinars. This is episode 14 of the series. In the past six, I focused on shocks to the labor market, the extremely high unemployment rates and the likely paths and risks to reemployment in specific industries. In the next two webinars, I'll turn my attention to business closures, also called business deaths, using some Census and Bureau of Labor Statistics data, along with some of IBIS World's proprietary industry risk ratings. Realize that business closures can take various forms, one of the most common being bankruptcies. This is strongly tied to loan defaults. As usual, there's a considerable amount of detail in what follows, so feel free to take the liberty to pause and take a closer look if something piques your interest. As I mentioned, I'll use some historical data on establishment closures meshed with IBIS World's industry risk ratings. I'll entertain the following industry groups, agriculture, forestry, fishing, and hunting, mining, quarrying, and oil and gas extraction, construction, manufacturing, both wholesale and retail trade, the broad transportation and warehousing group, and also information industries. As we all know, many businesses have been closed due to the pandemic, with others simply having limped along with a reduced labor force. There will be countless enterprises that simply will not survive. In fact, in the next several quarters, we'll likely see an increase in liquidity risk, obligor defaults, and even long-term credit risks surfacing. Many businesses have received aid via the CARES Act and the Payment Protection Program, but as my IBIS colleague Rob Miles recently noted, this may have supported businesses that should not have been propped up. Firms that were on the decline before the crisis, simply buying some time. This suggests the possibility of a second wave of business deaths, even in the absence of a second wave of the virus. As a point of reference, here are the number of establishments by annual receipt size for the eight industry groups I'll cover today. The second table calculates these in percentage terms. Feel free to take some time to peruse this. For these groups, the greatest concentrations occur on the smallest end of the size spectrum, with the secondary smattering at the upper end of the scale for a few industry groups. However, if we look at the firm or enterprise level, the concentration in the small to mid-market range is very clear. Indeed, smaller businesses constitute a large share of America's output and employment. According to the Small Business Administration, small businesses with fewer than 500 employees constitute nearly half of our GDP. A key point here is should firms with multiple locations come under financial stress, they are more likely to first cut the number of locations rather than default on their loans. Although to be sure, emerging delinquencies remain a key indicator of trouble. Let's take a look at some closure data. This figure depicts the number of business closures last year. Wholesale and retail trade, along with construction, unfortunately led the way. This is very consistent with historical norms. As for historical closing rates, looking at the over the cycle 2006 through 2019 period, again the construction industry is the highest in the pack, with information, transportation and warehousing, and agriculture not far behind. I'll disaggregate this in what follows to provide a better picture where the likely problem areas are going forward. Before I turn to more granular analysis, here are job losses by closed establishments charted against establishment age measured in years. The latest data release was for 2017, but a very similar pattern emerges in previous years. The inference here is that vintage matters, particularly in determining survival rates of businesses. In fact, according to an SBA report, about two-thirds of businesses survive at least two years and about half survive at least five years. Thus, as one would expect, after the first few relatively volatile years, survival rates tend to flatten out. Moreover, and I find this quite interesting, by the way, the report concluded that starting a business in a negative economy has little effect on a business's survival. And survival rates are similar across industries. 
I found this to be quite surprising, to be honest, but very worthy of note. And for you portfolio managers out there, you might consider running some correlations of various vintages against your key performance indicators like defaults and charge-offs. This might well serve your lending policies during these confusing times. Well, it's time to disaggregate and disentangle. In this table, I consider the broad agriculture group. Here you can see the average closure rates over the 2006 through 2019 period, the past peak over this period, and finally, the ratio of the 219 rate to the past peak. I also include IBIS World's industry risk ratings for these industry segments. Hunting, fishing, and trapping are the riskiest in this group with extremely high historical closing rates, as you can see. Areas of crop production that are most vulnerable include soybean, oilseed, corn, plus wheat and barley farming. Logging will be largely determined by downstream demand by construction contractors, which I'll discuss momentarily. As for the mining group, all three of these lines of businesses are flagged with high risk for the rest of this year. And regardless of the economic climate in 2021, oil and gas extraction and the businesses that support them are unlikely to get pulled out of the doldrums owing to ongoing weakness in oil prices. And the risk of business failures for mining firms will clearly hinge on the fate of industrial production next year. Construction contractors, notably glass contractors, roofers, electricians, plumbers, flooring installers, and carpenters are likely to experience a high incidence of business deaths over the next year. Although Ibis World sees medium risk for building construction, they have suffered high closing rates in the past, which may be a cause of concern down the road. Take a moment to check out this table for manufacturing. Except for apparel, this collection of industries had relatively low rates of closures in the past. However, most of these are red flagged for at least the remainder of this year. Their 2021 fate will largely be decided by the growth of overall industrial production, as many of these manufacture intermediate goods. Wood production is borderline medium risk and will follow suit with how well the construction industry fares. The wholesale trade arena is obviously segmented. As I mentioned in previous webinars, durable goods are much riskier during hard times than non-durables, as evidenced in this table. And electronic goods markets are often non-essential or discretionary spends that are equally vulnerable during periods of economic stress. Retail trade follows a similar pattern to the wholesale side of the business. The added dimension here are social distancing and non-essential business policies. We all know that the risk of failures for retail is highly conditioned on location. Plus, government COVID-19 policies vary widely, state by state, city by city, town by town. And recently, many areas are facing shocking upturns in coronavirus cases, thus casting a dubious shadow on many retailers not to mention other businesses. Many transportation-related industries are obvious casualties of the pandemic, as you can see from this table. Most should hopefully enjoy some semblance of a recovery next year, barring a second virus wave. Perhaps the exception being air transportation that is probably destined to recover only slowly. Airlines are more than likely to merge before they go bankrupt, but who knows? The airline industry is highly volatile and surely some delinquencies are possible. Scenic and sightseeing companies are expected to have the most sizable closure rates of this group, a grim reminder of the vulnerabilities in the past. And finally, let's take a look at the broad-based information industry group. Weakness in the publishing industry is concentrated in newspaper, magazine, periodical, and directory publishing, suggesting that an onslaught of business closures is in the offing. In the non-internet broadcasting world, television broadcasters and cable providers have succumbed to a multitude of rapidly emerging competing media platforms. Cable companies have been losing subscribers in droves. The motion picture and sound recording industry segment is yellow flagged given their huge closing rates of the past and intense competition from major players much at the expense of smaller operators. 
So thanks very much for joining me today. Next week will be part two of this mini segment, so I hope to see you then. In the meantime, I hope you're having a great start to the summer. Stay safe and Godspeed.